Ayo, it's the awesome oscillator, fooling misguided traders since 2004. So as a lot of you know, if you follow me on Twitter, uh, I had some difficulties this week with the video I wanted to put out. Um, so we will postpone that till next week and cross our fingers. Um, but for now, we are going to kind of add another video that I didn't even plan on making. It's going to be a filler episode this week, traders. But usually when I do filler episodes, people really like them because normally we're just talking about indicators, which is what we like to do anyway here. Um, so I was not going to talk about this one. Those of you who are pretty advanced in the no-nonsense Forex way of trading um, probably understand why I'm not really high on this indicator at all. Um, but I think there are some takeaways that we can get just by looking at it. And I think it will particularly help traders who are either beginners or intermediates in this whole way we trade. So let's jump right into it. Um, here's what you have to know about the awesome oscillator. It is included in your MT4 already in the Forex indicators video, which is the very first video in the technical analysis playlist. I said, look, you have a lot of indicators you're going to need to test. Just go ahead and start with the ones you already have. And for this way of trading, you need MT4. Um, don't sit there and think you can just do all this on trading view. It's not going to be a great experience. Suck it up, get MT4. And when you're testing indicators, start with the ones that are already there. It's going to give you good practice. It's going to show you what you need to be looking for. And you might actually run into one or two that work really well. Um, we certainly have here at the channel. Uh, the, the best indicator in the whole wide world is already included in your MT4 package. So just goes to show, you know, there's no reason to get way ahead of yourself when you already have a nice little suite of indicators right there in front of you. Now, as far as the awesome oscillator goes, it was created in 2004, I think. It is a Bill Williams indicator. His book came out in 2004. That's the only correlation I can really see. But this is fine. Um, as you guys know, Spot Forex pretty much came around in 1996. I usually already put one strike against any indicator or tool that was created before that because it was created typically, or more, most likely for stocks, which is a market that operates differently than the Forex market does. Um, I will still check those indicators out, but um, at least this indicator is not already starting with one strike against it, if I am correct about it coming up in 2004. Um, it is a trend indicator. If you guys remember the trend indicators video, you should definitely watch that before you start watching individual indicator videos like this one. Um, it is a zero cross. We look for the trend when price, or really in this case, the histogram crosses a zero line. And that tells us to go long or short. Um, there are other things you can look for on this oscillator, and we will look at those as well. And uh, it is in the Bill Williams family. You're going to notice that Bill Williams has an entire uh, list of indicators he made already programmed on your MT4. Um, now, what does this mean? Not much, but usually people who like one like the others, and people who don't like one typically don't find a lot of value in the others either, and that's the camp I fall into. However, I think there are things we can learn just by giving this thing a chance and seeing what it can do. So let's put it up on our charts and uh, just, just see. Let's just take a look. So here we are on the Euro dollar daily chart. It is New York City. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere because the Euro dollar is one of the worst pairs you can trade. Um, I did a whole video on this. Uh, yes, I still trade it, but I don't recommend it for beginners. And it's something I just advise everybody uses a bit more caution on when they trade it themselves. But this is really good for indicator testing because if an indicator or an oscillator or any kind of tool can do well here, you are most likely going to see even better results on different pairs. So for that reason and many other reasons, we always start here on No Nonsense Forex. So let's go ahead and pull the awesome oscillator up. Now, I did a video, not a video, a podcast too, on quicker ways 
to kind of sort through indicators when you test them just by eyeballing it. Um, once you go outside of the MT4 suite and start looking for other indicators to use, you're normally going to see a picture of them just so you can kind of see what they do. And a lot of times you can just look at it and say, okay, that's not at all what I'm looking for. Either it's something that calls reversals, it does some other kind of mess that I'm not interested in, you know, really easy to see. But with the MT4 indicators, you don't get that luxury because you actually have to pull them up first. Um, so I recommend you do that with every one of these. So we're going to go to the awesome oscillator now. And you're going to notice um, another, well, not another, uh, the first strike against it is you cannot change the settings on it. You are stuck with whatever it gives you. Um, so you better hope it works amazingly because you have no chance to make this thing better at its core. You know, the only way you have a chance to make this thing better is by adding other indicators to it, which is what you're going to do to your main trend indicator anyway. So what you really want to look for here is something that works pretty darn well on its own because an improved Ferrari is going to be a lot better than having an improved Fiat, if that makes any sense. So let's go ahead and just put this up. I'm actually, because it is a zero cross type indicator, I'm just going to put a zero line there. Uh, silver should be fine. And let's see what that does. Okay, good. So pretty simple with a zero cross, when you have this histogram and that's all you have, you are looking for moves to where this thing flips from negative to positive or positive to negative. And as soon as that flip occurs, that is where you are going to want to enter. I don't know if you guys knew this. It's kind of common in the indicator space that all this thing is um, when it comes to these entries right here is a moving average crossover. All it is, I think it's the 34 and the 5. And all Bill Williams did was make it a histogram and put his name on it. So, Bill Williams, you are cheating. <laughs> that is not cool. But hey, look, for all you programmers out there, if you want to take any combination of any two moving averages and make it a crossover and turn it into a histogram and call it the duck butter, you know, a oscillator, anything you want. I mean, literally, there are no limitations. There are no rules against doing this. And you want to become famous and write a book or sell it, whatever. You can do it. <laughs> There's literally no restrictions against it, apparently. Uh, so there really is not much genius behind this thing from the start. I mean, it does do some other things with the color changes, which we're going to talk about too. But let's go ahead and kind of test it out a little bit and just see, because it's not giving us too many signals, which is for training purposes, nice, because there's less to do. So I really hate my screencasting software. It's not letting me do the control F. Um, so right here, not where it was neutral, but where it actually started going positive. This would have been a long entry right here. And that would have been, I don't have the ATR pulled up, but we can all pretty much agree that that would have been a winner in some capacity right there. So good, and you got one win. Now let's go to this short signal right here. It was the only short signal we had on this entire screen. Right here, uh, no, that was certainly a loss. At no point would you have gotten any place where you could have taken profit off. And you would have either lost here or here, depending on where your stop loss was. So one win, one loss. Let's go ahead and... Check this one out. Oh, it would have got you in on that nice little pullback candle there. And there was certainly money to be made on that trade. So two wins, one loss. That's 67%. You know, say what you want about this thing, but that is worth a closer look. So what I would do just with that part of it is start looking on a few other pairs to see what my percentage would be there as well. This would have actually made it past my first cut if this is all I had to look at. Believe it or not, as basic as this oscillator is and as much as I really don't like it, um, if I just had this to go on, that's a positive. I mean, 
66, 67% win rate, you know, you're moving on to the next round. Um, it would have probably gotten destroyed later. But when you're looking at something like this, and two wins and one loss is all you have, you can officially put this in the winner's column and move on to either another chart, another, another currency pair, or another time frame. However you do your indicator backtesting. I did a whole podcast on this as well. You can just run a search on my channel. Um, but don't overthink this. Um, you got to understand, most charting tools are coin flips at best. That's a 50% win rate. We've just moved up to a 66, 67. As far as we know, you know, you got to go further with it. Um, but that's really what you're looking for. But also remember too, when it comes to trend indicators, if there's ever a really nice trend, almost every trend indicator is going to catch it at some point. What we really want to know is how soon does it get us into that trend? Because any extra pips we can grab along the way, you know, definitely add up over time. And, you know, we also want to see at the end of the day how many losses it prevents us from getting into. There are some trend indicators which will get you in a lot more losses. And you guys know our mantra here. We win by not losing. So going forward, when you really want to grab that great confirmation indicator that you're going to lock on to for a while, that's going to be your main criteria. Um, but beginning traders who are testing indicators run into this all the time. They find something that gets them into this nice big trend and they get hearts in their eyes, but they don't realize that most indicators that attempt to do this are going to get you into this at some point and make you pips. It does not make it a good choice. You need to go further and that's how you do it. So let's go ahead and look at some of the other ways that this oscillator tries to get you into trades. You're going to notice when the color changes. These are reversal trades you can get into. Um, so if, God, I can already tell this is going to be ugly. So you have a good one here. You know, you would have pretty much not called a bottom, but done pretty darn close and done really well on that trade right there. If you just waited for this thing to turn red to green and try to catch the move um, again. You might test something like this and fall in love with it, but you need to go further because if you did go further, you'd realize a lot of times these reversal signals absolutely killed you. So you're supposed to go along here. Disaster. Again. Reversal here. Unless you just forgot to put a stop loss on, you would have certainly gotten stopped out at some point. Let's see, where else did it try to call a reversal? Here. Disaster. Here. I don't know, depending on where you take profit, you probably didn't get any here. It's probably another disaster. Finally got a good one. And then it wanted you to go short here. <laughs> no. Like, here again. That might have been a little something there. And then I wanted you to go long here. No, really, really bad. Um, this, for many reasons, is why we don't try to call reversals in Forex. We don't even look for indicators that attempt to do this um, because you could just sit there and do what I do every time um, and mark it out, put it on a spreadsheet. You will find that using indicators or using anything to call reversals in the long term is going to hurt and hurt really bad. But there is one other way we can use this experience. No nonsense. Forex traders probably already know, but instead of doing the color changes to find a reversal, we can do color changes to find continuation trades. Now, if you don't know what continuation trades are, I made an entire video on it. Please don't ask questions in the comment section when there's probably already a video uh, which addresses that. But let's take a look at some of these. Now, right off the start, we had one here. Histogram is already below the zero line. At some point, it flipped to green, but then it flipped back to red. And it would have gotten us in right here. 
This is hard without my ATR up, but I didn't want to make the screen messy. So probably a win there, but at the very least it wasn't a loss. So that's good. Now how about here? Same thing. Below the histogram. Flip from green to red. Hard to say. I can't really tell you what happened there. Now normally when you see this flip to red and then right back to green, that's probably a loss, but you need to test it anyway because you just don't really know. So you would have gone short on this very bullish candle. But then on the very next candle, you see the line flip back to green. That is an obvious get out signal. And so you really wouldn't have done much there. Now on this one, told you to go short. You would have actually had this many pips before the histogrammer again would have told you to get out because the color changed. So I, not much to really say on these. You're just going to have to test. I can tell you right here. That's not a win at all. That was a bad continuation trade. How about this one here? Nope, really bad. But you always have to look. You know, no matter how basic these oscillators are, you have to understand what you're looking for and what there might be of use for in these things and test it out. And that's how you do it. And I think the awesome oscillator is a great way to show you this because it's pretty basic at its core, but it can do a few different things. And this will apply to many, many other indicators you run into in the future. So it's okay to be dismissive if you can tell right away it's not what you want. But give it a good look. And if you think there's any redeeming quality you might be able to extract out of it, test it. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You know, you find something amazing that gives you tons and tons of pips over the lifetime of your trading career. You know, it's worth sitting down and at least looking at it if you think there might be something there. And the awesome oscillator is definitely something I would give a look. Um, I've already looked at it and I didn't like it. But if I were to just start now, I would definitely take the main entries that we saw right here be pretty happy with that two and one record and, you know, kind of put it in the winner's pile and then test it even further later. So in conclusion, it really isn't a great indicator to me, but you need to test it for yourself. You and I run different systems, so you have to give all of these a fair go, but you need to also know, and I hope this video helped you in this process. It, when you very, when you put these things on the screen for the very first time, all right, what are some of the things I immediately need to start looking for? Because that awesome oscillator had, as basic as it was, had three different aspects to it. And even though we don't use the reversals, you need to be able to recognize those things off the bat because you don't want to miss anything. You know, the worst thing you can do is be lazy and overly dismissive and not catch all of the ways these things can be used and not test those out. Because what if you just completely passed on something that could have worked amazing in your system? You really do have to keep an open mind here. You know, be optimistic, but cautiously optimistic when you test these out. Um, but there is an absolute rule-based process on how to test these out. I did them in podcast episodes. I will link some of them down below. And I will also link the beginner's video down below as well, because that's gonna give you the complete roadmap on how to trade this system and put your own trading algorithm together based on Forex indicators. And this is what you're going to need to do if you're gonna be successful here, traders. And this is what this channel does. You cannot go on YouTube, look up Awesome Oscillator, watch a random video, and then expect to go make money. It just doesn't work that way. It's a $5 trillion a day market. It is not that simple. But thankfully, it doesn't have to be overly complex. It can still be a lot of fun. And this is what this channel attempts to bring to you. So subscribe, hit the bell. This whole thing is a process. It's a great process, and this is the only Forex trading YouTube channel on the planet which has taken the time to actually put this entire free curriculum together for you. More videos still to come. I'll see you all next week.
Go get it.